Welcome to today's lesson. In this tutorial, we will investigate and graph inverse relations. So here we are, and we're in section 6.4, at least the first half of it in our textbook, inverse functions and relations. Let's first talk about what an inverse is. When we're talking about an inverse, we're ultimately talking about something that undoes something else. So I'm going to say that an inverse of a function undoes the original function. And what I, mean, what I mean by that is we have many different inverse operations. For example, if we were talking about to undo adding 3, we would, of course, subtract 3. Because addition and subtraction undo each other. If we were to undo dividing by 2, we would multiply by 2. Because division and multiplication undo each other. Ultimately, the biggest point of today, to find the inverse, we will simply need to swap or switch or trade the domain, which is the x values, with the range, which is the y values. That's all we're going to be doing today. We're going to take the x values and y values and swap them, switch them, trade them, and we will have the inverse. We're just looking at it graphically today. So I'd like to look at this first one, f of x equals 1 half x plus 1. Now this f of x symbol is really just a fancy way of saying y. It's just a, so that we could talk about f of x or we could talk about g of x. Sometimes we just use different letters, but ultimately we're just talking about y equals 1 half x plus 1. What I'd like to do is graph this using this t-table onto our graph patch. So I've already sub selected some inputs. Let's plug the inputs in. Negative 2 for x. So 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1, of course, is 0. Let's plug in negative 1. 1 half times negative 1 is negative 1 half. Plus 1 would be positive 1 half. Or 0. 0.5, that's fine. Plug in a 0. 1 half of 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. Let's plug in a 1. 1 half times 1 is 1 half, and 1 half plus 1 is 1 and a half, or I'll say 1.5. I'm fine with you using decimals. I'm fine with you using fractions. Plug in a 2. 1 half times 2 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Let's plot all of these uh, points. Negative 2, 0 is right here, and negative 1, 1 half would be negative 1, and then up 1 half approximately there. 0, 1. 1 comma 1.5 would be up one and a half right there and then 2 2 these are the five points that my t-table just generated now I do know that this is actually a line and that the slope is one half so I could find some more points I know that if I go up one and write two I'm on another point so I'm gonna do up one and write two and down one left two would get me on the same line, so down one, left two, one more, just to get some more points. And there's my nice red straight line. And perhaps you choose to do two different colors here so we can color code. What we're going to do to find our new function is we're going to switch the x's and the y's. So everything that was x right here is going to now become in the y's, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And all of these that were the y's will now become the x's, 0, 1 half, 1, 1 1.5, and 2. Now let's plot our new set of five ordered pairs. Zero, I'm doing it in a different color, of course. 0, negative 2 is here. And then 1 half, negative 1 would go over 1 half and then down 1. 1, 0 is here. 1 1.5 and then 1 and then 2, 2. So those are my five dots for my blue line. And what we just did with this blue line is we just graphed the inverse. Instead of new, I'm going to put inverse. And it's real simple to graph the inverse. All we need to do is take the ordered pairs of our original and swap the x and the y's and plot those new points and we'll have the inverse. Let's do again for g of x. Again, that's just a fancy name for y. y equals 
So y equals x squared. This is a quadratic, our basic quadratic pattern. Let's plug into our t table. If we square negative 2, we get 4. If we square negative 1, we get 1. If we square 0, we get 0. If we square 1, we get 1. If we square 2, we get 4. So let's plot those. In fact, those are the same exact points of our quadratic parent function. Oops, that's not correct. 4 and negative 2, 4. So there's my original quadratic here in this case. Now if I wanted to graph the inverse, that's what our new t-table is going to be. If I wanted to graph the inverse, all I need to do is take these five ordered pairs, take the x column and put it where the y's are, so negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Take the y column, the outputs, and put them in as the inputs, 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. And now let's graph these new five ordered pairs. Again, in a different color, preferably. 4, negative 2 is over here. 1, negative 1 is here. 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. And we can connect that. So this blue graph is the graph of the inverse. So what do we notice about these two? Well, you might sort of see that they are a mirror image. Our red original function and our blue original function are sort of a mirror image. Our red original function here and our blue relation are inverses and they are exactly a mirror image over this diagonal line right down the middle of this diagonal. This line happens to be the line y equals x and it's important to know that but they are exactly a mirror. If you took your piece of paper and folded it on this diagonal, the red line and the blue line would exactly match up. Same thing down here. If we dot in the line y equals x, this main diagonal, put y equals x right here, we can see that the red curve would fold right onto the blue curve. So inverses are mirror images. I'm going to say across the line y equals x. So when you graph your inverses, of course, you're going to do it by simply swapping the x's and the y's and then graphing your new dots, your new points. You will always be able to check yourself to make sure that it's exactly symmetrical along this mirror, or along this line y equals x. One other thing I want to note about g of x, g of x is the function x squared. And the inverse of squaring something is taking the square root of something. And you can sort of see the square root parent function, at least this, the, the top half of this blue function, is the square root function. Now we also have this bottom half, which is the negative square root function, and that's exactly what the inverse of squaring is. Plus or minus the square root of x is what we graphed in blue. So that's kind of neat. We have the positive square root and we have the negative square root together. So let's talk more about function. We, you, you discussed this in Algebra 1. The definition of a function, each input has only one output. That's the basic definition of what a function is. For every input, for every domain value, for every x, there can only be one output. And how we determine if a graph is a function when we're looking at a graph, we simply use the vertical line test. The vertical line test is what we use to test if a function is a function. 
So I'm going to take my vertical line, I've got a nice orange one right over here, and what we do is we take our vertical line, or you could just take your pencil or your pen, and I'm going to look at the red first. I'm going to see if it's a function. What I need to do is cross right through this red function and see if I cross more than one point at a time. And no, I don't. I'm just looking at the red. It does not cross more than one point at a time. So that means that this red line is a function. Let's look at the blue line. If I cross this vertical line through the blue line, I should only be touching one point at a time. And in that, indeed, I do. So both the red and the blue lines are functions. So let's look at our red parabola. I should only be touching one point at a time for the red. I'm touching one point at a time, and this is true. For the red, I'm only touching one point. So the red is a function. Now let's look at the blue. I should only be touching one point at a time, except, whoops, now I'm touching more than one point. I'm touching one point here, and I'm touching one point here. So this blue um, graph is failing the vertical line test because I'm crossing more than one point. So therefore, it is not a function. I'm going to put that line back up here, and we can answer our questions here. So the, our original function, y equals 1 half x plus 1, is this a function? Yes. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Is this a function? Yes. Was its inverse a function? Yes, both lines were functions. The second one, y equals x squared, was that a function? Yes, remember that was this graph, that's a function. Was its inverse a function? That was the one turning on its side, and we said no, because it failed the vertical line test. It crossed two points at a time, that is not a function. Let's look at one more example, and let's look at this one. Graph x equals 2 and its inverse. Let's talk about the line x equals 2. Now, you should remember vux. Whenever I see x equals a number, I think of the vux from hoy vux. Uh, it's got the x equals. V stands for vertical. This is a vertical line. I'm going to graph it in red. This is a vertical line line. x equals 2 means that I can generate whatever ordered pairs I want as long as the x coordinate is 2. So how about 2, 0? How about 2, 1? How about, I don't know, 2, 3? How about 2, negative 4? As long as the x equals 2, it doesn't matter what the y is. So 2, 0 and 2, 1 and 2, 3 and 2, negative 4, we can see are all on this nice red vertical line. has a slope of undefined, which is what the u stands for in VUX. It's an x equals equation. It's an undefined slope. It is a vertical line. So let's see if we can now graph the inverse of this vertical line. Remember, to find the inverse, all we have to do is swap the x's and the y's. We have to switch the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates. So 2, 0 becomes 0, 2. 2, 1 becomes 1, 2. 2, 3 becomes 3, 2. And 2, negative 4 becomes negative 4, 2. So now all of the y's are equal to 2. Let's graph these points and see what happens. 0, 2 is here. 1, 2. 3, 2 and negative 4, 2. And we can see all of these points lie on this blue horizontal line. And that is the line y equals 2. You can see that all the y coordinates are 2. So the inverse is y equals 2, which is a horizontal line. So the inverse of this red vertical line is a horizontal line blue line. Okay, the colors don't have to be that every time. I'm just like the color code. <laughs> okay, so which of these graphs is the function? So if I take my, hor my, excuse me, my vertical line and cross it, let's start with the blue. If I cross it across the blue, I'm only crossing one point at a time, so therefore that blue is a function. If I try it on the red, it fails every single time along that vertical line. 
So the red is not a function. A vertical line is not a function. The one that is a function is our horizontal line. This is the function, y equals 2. So my last question, what could we do to test if the inverse of a graph will be a function without actually having to graph the inverse? And this leads us to what we call the horizontal line test. We just talked about the vertical line test. The vertical line test is to test if something is a function. We have a horizontal line test to test if its inverse will be a function. So if I go back to the page where we graphed those um, uh, uh, graphs here, if we take the vertical line and cross it through all these things, that's to test if something is a function. But then we have to use a horizontal line, and if it crosses one point at a time for the horizontal line, therefore its inverse will be a function. So if we talk about this red parabola, we know that its inverse is not a function, but we don't need to graph its inverse to, uh, to be able to know that. We can take the vertical line across this red graph and see, yep, it's a function because it crosses one point at a time. But if we take the horizontal line test and try to cross that through this red parabola, we see that it fails the horizontal line test because it crosses more than one point. So the horizontal line test is a way to test if its inverse is going to be a function. So if you cannot, if, if, if a horizontal line crosses more than one point, then the inverse will not be a function. All right. And then one last thing I wanted to show you I think we already sort of did. It says go back and graph the line y equals x, y equals x on each of our graphs, and what do we notice? So when we graphed y equals x here, again, we, we notice that that's the mirror, but look at the two graphs. They intersect right on that line y equals x. And here's our line y equals x, and look at the two graphs. They intersect here, they intersect here. And one last one on our last graph, if we draw, dot in the line y equals x, that was a little off there, there's y equals x. If we graph that line, if two um, inverses are going to intersect, they have to intersect on that line. If inverses intersect they must intersect on the line y equals x they have to intersect on that mirror <clears throat> okay i think that's about it for graphing inverses Thanks for watching that, and we'll practice in class. See ya.